Will Waterproof's lyrical monologue by Alfred Lord Tennyson O Plump Head Waiter at the Cock, to which I most resort, how goes the time? Tis five o'clock, go fetch a pint of port, but let it not be such as that you set before chance comers, but such whose father grape grew fat on Lusitanian summers. No vain libation to the muse, but may she still be kind, and whisper lovely words, and use her influence on the mind, to make me write my random rhymes, ere they be half forgotten, nor add an altar, many times, till all be ripe and rotten. I pledge her, and she comes and dips her laurel in the wine, and lays it thrice upon my lips, these favored lips of mine, until the charm have power to make new life blood warm the bosom, and barren. Commonplaces break in full and kindly blossom. I pledge her silent at the board, her gradual fingers steal and touch upon the master chord of all I felt and feel. Old wishes, ghosts of broken plans, and phantom hopes assemble, and that child's heart within the man's begins to move and tremble. Throw, many an hour of summer suns by many pleasant ways, against its fountain upward runs the current of my days. I kiss the lips I once have kissed, the gas light wavers dimmer, and softly, throw, a vinous mist, my college friendships glimmer. I grow in worth, and wit, and sense, unboding critic pen, or that eternal one of pence, which vexes public men, who hold their hands to all, and cry for that which all deny them, who sweep the crossings, wet or dry, and all the world go by them. Ah yet, though, all the world forsake, though, fortune clip my wings, I will not cramp my heart, nor take half views of men and things. Let Whig and Tory stir their blood, there must be stormy weather, but for some true result of good all parties work together. Let there be thistles, there are grapes, if old things, there, are new, ten thousand broken lights and shapes, yet glimpses of the true. Let raffs be rife in prose and rhyme, we lack not rhymes and reasons, as on this whirligig of time we circle with the seasons. This earth is rich in man and maid, with fair horizons bound, this whole wide earth of light and shade comes out, a perfect round. High over roaring temple bar, and, set in. Heaven's third story, I look at all things as they are, but throw, a kind of glory. Head waiter, honored by the guest half mused, or reeling ripe, the pint, you brought me, was the best that ever came from pipe. But though, the port surpasses praise, my nerves have dealt with stiffer. Is there some magic in the place? Or do my peptics differ? For since I came to live in, learn, no pint of white or red had ever half the power to turn this wheel within my head, which bears a seasoned brain about, unsubject to confusion, though, soaked and saturate, out and out, throw, every convolution. For I am of a numerous house, with many kinsmen gay, where long and largely we carouse as who shall say me nay. Each month, a birthday coming on, we drink. Defying trouble, or sometimes two would meet in one, and then we drank it double. Whether the vintage, yet unkept, had relish, fiery new, or, elbow deep in sawdust, slept, as old as Waterloo, or stowed, when classic canning died, in musty bins and chambers, had cast upon its crusty side the gloom of ten Decembers. The muse, the jolly muse, it is. She answered to my, call, she changes with that mood or this, is all in all to all. She lit the spark within my throat, to make my blood run quicker, used all her fiery will, and smote her life into the liquor. And hence this halo lives about the waiter's hands, that reach to each his perfect pint of stout, his proper chop to each. He looks not like the common breed that with the napkin. Dally. I think he came like Ganymede, from some delightful valley. The cock was of a larger egg than modern poultry drop, stepped forward on a firmer leg, and crammed a plumper crop. Upon an ampler dunghill trod, crowd lustier late and early, sipped wine from silver, praising God, and raked in golden barley. A private life was all his joy, till in a court he saw a something pottle-bodied boy, that knuckled at the top. He stooped and clutched him, fair and good, flew over roof and casement. His brothers of the weather stood stock still for sheer amazement. But he, by farmstead, thorpe and spire, and followed with acclaims, assigned to many a staring shire, came crowing over Thames. Right down by smoky palls they bore, till, where the Street grows straighter, one fixed forever at the door, and one became head waiter. But whither would my fancy go? How out of place she makes the violet of a legend blow among the chops and steaks. Tis but a steward of the can, one shade more plump than common, as just in mere a serving man as any born of woman. I range too high, what draws me down into the common. Day, is it the weight of that half-crown, which I shall have to pay? 
for, something duller than at first, nor wholly comfortable, I sit, my empty glass reversed, and thrumming on the table, half fearful that, with self at strife I take myself to task, lest of the fullness of my life I leave an empty flask, for I had hope, by something rare, to prove myself a poet, but, while I plan and plan, my hair is grey before I know it. So fares it since the years began, till they be gathered up. The truth, that flies the flowing can, will haunt the vacant cup, and others' follies teach us not, nor much their wisdom teaches, and most, of sterling worth, is what our own experience preaches. Ah, let the rusty theme alone, we know not what we know, but for my pleasant hour, tis gone, tis gone, and let it go. Tis gone. A thousand such have slipped away from my embraces, and fallen into the dusty crypt of darkened forms and faces. Go, therefore, thou. Thy betters went long since, and came no more. With peals of genial clamor sent from many a tavern door, with twisted quirks and happy hits, from misty men of letters. The tavern hours of mighty wits, thine elders and thy betters. Hours, when the poet's words and looks had yet their native glow, not yet the fear of little books had made him talk for show, but, all his vast heart sheriffs warmed, he flashed his random speeches. Ere days, that deal in Anna, swarmed his literary leeches. So mix forever with the past, like all good things on earth, for should I prize thee, couldst thou last, at half thy real worth? I hold it good, good things should pass. With time I will not quarrel. It is but yonder empty glass that makes me maudlin moral. Head waiter of the chop house here, to which I most resort, I too must part. I hold thee dear for this good pint of port. For this, thou shalt from all things suck marrow of mirth and laughter, and, wheresoe'er thou move, good luck shall fling her old shoe after. But thou wilt never move from hence, the sphere thy fate allots, thy latter days increased with pence go down among the pots. Thou battenest by the greasy gleam in haunts of hungry sinners, old boxes, larded with the steam of thirty thousand dinners. We fret, we fume, would shift our skins, would quarrel with our lot. Thy caras, under polished tins, to serve the hot and hot, to come and go, and come again, returning like the pewit, and watched by silent gentlemen, that trifle with the cruet. Live long, ere from thy topmost head the thick-set hazel dies. Long, ere the hateful crow shall tread the corners of thine eyes. Live. Long, nor feel in head or chest our changeful equinoxes, till mellow death, like some late guest, shall call thee from the boxes. But when he calls, and thou shalt cease to pace the gridded floor, and, laying down an unctuous lease of life, shalt earn no more. No carved crossbones, the types of death, shall show thee pass to heaven, but carved crosspipes, and underneath, a pint pot neatly graven.